Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So now consider the case where this particular like the position of this disturbance keep moving okay so to understand it better let's consider this so let us say this is your initial point of disturbance and then you are moving in this direction right so let us assume this let us analyze this disturbance at say uh, this is a time t0 and this location corresponds to time 1 second and this location corresponds to time 2 seconds let us say say uh, 0 0 say yeah this is at 0 that is at 1 second and you have traveled another uh, and you are you are trying to find out the disturbance at say 2 seconds and then at also 3 seconds Okay. So, when you are moving at speeds which are far less than the speed of sound, okay. So, if you are, if your Mach number is far less than 1, which is like velocity of your flight vehicle is far less than velocity of sound, okay. So, in that case, let us say at time t0, at 0 seconds, you have created a disturbance. So, that disturbance travels in the form of after one second, so this so this may not coincide. See, this is uh, don't don't get confused with that. So at one second, or say when you are at one second, right? This disturbance might have travelled a distance. Ye, am I correct? A times one, one year here. So when you are at two seconds, this has travelled a disturbance. So this can be much. So, when you are at 2 seconds, this has travelled a disturbance, I mean this disturbance has travelled a distance 2a. So, this 2a and this scale are not equal, please do not get confused. So, this disturbance keep, the propagation of this disturbance keep increasing as the time lapses from your, right, this thing, yeah, from, uh, from the point where you started the disturbance. So, in order to make it better. What I will say is, so say still this is 2 years, right? So, okay. So, this, this is your, uh, assume this, the center of the circle is this point at 0 seconds and you are trying to figure out at after say 1 second, 2 second and 3 seconds. So, this has travelled a distance 4a, right. So, sorry 3a, okay. So, when you are at 3. So, after that what happens? So, after 0 seconds you have already created a disturbance which is 2 seconds before, right. Am I correct or not at this particular location? So, if you draw another, so this will travel when you analyze it at point 3, this will travel a distance of 2a, am I correct? So, when you are here, that means you already passed, I mean you already spent 3 seconds, within the 3 seconds, the disturbance which you have initiated at, at a location, at this particular location will travel a distance 2a, is not it? So, similarly, the one here, it will travel a disturbance. Uh, so sorry, the disturbance will travel a distance a, on a, which is one second ahead at this particular location where you are, right? Isn't it? So that means the disturbance always is always ahead of you. Am I correct or not? Because so the the radius that you can travel within or the distance say will be v infinity times delta t. This particular distance will be v infinity times delta t. So delta t is 1s and v infinity is far less than that particular a in that particular region. Am I correct or not? That is what we have it here. v infinity is far less than a. So, the distance you might have covered is far less than what the, the pro, uh, what the disturbance might have already progressed. 
Correct or not? So that means the molecules which are far ahead of you, of your uh, location, will get the information about your presence. Okay. So which have enough time to get adjusted with the shape of your body, so that the flow can happen or the fluid elements can smoothly flow over the body. Right? The streamlines have enough time to get bent around your object. Right? So they get the information about your presence and the kind of pressure disturbance that you are creating. Right? The fluid elements which are far ahead will have that information. So, but when you are travelling with a higher velocity, let us assume you are travelling with the velocity of sound. Let us consider a case. So, this is like at, uh, at, at low or subsonic or at subsonic speeds we can see. So, this is the condition at subsonic speeds. Okay. So, when you move at the velocity of sound, let us say. So, the distance, what do you mean by that? So, let us say you have started at 0 seconds, no, you created a pressure disturbance at 0 seconds. So, the distance it will cover within a second will be equal to, let us say this is 1 second. So, this, this distance is equal to the distance that this uh, sound wave propagates, is not it, or the pressure wave propagates here, pressure pulse pro propagates. Am I correct or not? Why? Because you are also moving at a velocity equals to say when you are moving at Mach 1 which is velocity of your flight vehicle is velocity of sound, right. So, within one second you are here and the disturbance has also travelled which was initiated here a distance a, a times t which is equals to v times delta t, here delta t is 1, right. So, the same disturbance when you are at 2 seconds, right. So, what will happen to the same disturbance? You are there. Am I correct or not? So, let us say you travel one more second, you are at 3 seconds, the disturbance you have is again a concentric circle and you are on the circumference. Concentric circle about O here. Am I correct or not? And this particular at one second location, you have also created a disturbance. So, after when you are at 3 seconds, this will, this will say have 2a, is not it? Am I correct or not? So, the diameter of this will be 2a, diameter of this bigger circle will be 3a and at 1 second it will have a diameter. So, this, this the difference between this is 1 second, right? So, a, a second before your current location you have created a disturbance and this disturbance also travelled a distance here. So, that means, so at each and every point you are, you are with the disturbance, you are travelling with the disturbance, right. So, the, the air molecules, so let us see if you ta draw a tangent to this particular point. So, the air which is ahead of this particular point will not have any information about the object which is approaching those fluid elements. Okay. So, that is when we call this as a Mach wave, right. So, that, that Mach wave will create a lot of uh, changes to the, to the free stream, free stream velocity in terms of pressure, there will be a huge pressure increase as well as temperature and also the density. And downstream of this Mach wave, what we have is decrease in velocity compared to that of upstream velocity. Okay. Now, let us consider, so this is it at sonic speeds. So, let us say this is A, B and let us say this is at C is at sonic speed. Right. So, let us now consider a case when you are moving faster than the speed of sound there. So, what happens when you are moving faster than the speed of sound? This will be interesting, right, isn't it? So, let us consider this is the path that you are moving, right. So, say this is at 0 seconds. So, so 1 second location. So, let us not say now this has 1 second location because you are travelling 
at a higher speed compared to the top sound. Otherwise, you can still say that one second location. So by the time you reach this, the sound will not reach this particular one second. So because your velocity is far higher than this particular yeah. Yeah, sound velocity. So the sound, this, this one second may not be appropriate here, let us say A1, right? let us say uh, our uh, capital A, 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 capital A1 is the location, first location, right? another location which you have reached within some time say. Okay? But that sound may not be able to, that, that sometime may be T1, right, okay. So the sound may not, the, the distance propagation will be A times T1, whereas you have covered a distance V infinity times T1, which is higher than that of A1 times T1, okay. Why? Because you are trying, you are flying at higher velocities, so supersonic velocities, where the, your velocity is far higher than the velocity of sound. Okay. So, A times, not A1 times, A times T1. Now, so when you reach point B uh, or A2 here, what happens is, so, okay, at A1 again you have created another disturbance, okay. So, when you reach point A2, this A1 will travel certain distance, right? That again depends upon the difference between this and the time. So when you are at A1, or say the by the time the sound reaches this A1, you are all, you have already crossed this A1, right? And by the time this you the sound reaches A2, you have already crossed A2. That means the disturbance is always behind you, right? Similarly, when you the disturbance that you have created at A1. By the time it reaches A2, you have already reached ahead of A2. For example, uh, consider this case. Like, uh, let's. So now let us consider the propagation of this disturbance. So let point O at 1s, 2s, 3s, right? And you are at some other location here, right? The initial one, which you have, uh, like that point O, the disturbance that you have created, so may travel. diameter right which is yeah which is the velocity times velocity of sound times the disturbance here and the second one will also be right velocity times the delta t here and the third one Again, will also be velocity times delta E, delta T, right? So the diameter at each and every point will be the velocity times the corresponding time uh, lapsed, right? Since you have created the disturbance, okay? Now, see, yeah, because no disturbance will be able to overcome you. Why? Because you are traveling at a higher, higher A compared to this. Now, let us say if you draw a tangent to all these you know, disturbances, what you get is a cone, right? So if you draw, so this is not exactly to the scale, that's the reason why we may not be able to get the tangents properly, but say, if you draw a tangent to all these circles, okay? So this particular angle is known as mu, which is the cone angle here, right? So this this forms a Mach cone, Mach cone angle. Okay, so where sine mu is given by sine mu is what opposite by hypotenuse, right? This is a so this is tangent and this is the diameter which is perpendicular to the tangent. What I have is a t times a times delta t upon v infinity is the velocity at which you are traveling times delta t is what you have, if you have reached this particular location, this is vt times delta t, what you have is 1 upon m, right? So mu is equals to sine inverse 1 upon m, Mach number, m infinity, right? What we call it as Mach cone, right? 
So that means all the disturbance that you can see is limited or confined to this particular MAC cone. So if you are looking at the 2D, 2D, 2D profile of this, you can say wedge, MAC wedge or when you are looking at the 3D profile, it becomes a MAC cone, okay, fine. So all the disturbance is confined within this MAC cone. So whatever, like for example, whomsoever stay outside this particular MAC cone will not, will not get to know any disturbance. So to understand that, consider an example where a person is standing on the ground, right? So a supersonic aircraft has already passed him, okay? And he is not able to hear any, any sound from it, right? Until he gets into this Macon, okay? So, by the time he hears this, he's already, uh, the aircraft has already passed him. Okay. So what you call is, all this as, so this is a supersonic aircraft. Okay. This is called zone of action. And this is called zone of silence. Where there is no disturbance the see, the disturbance is not propagating ahead of this, okay. So whoever uh, are inside this, this is, this is the Mac cone or we can say Mac cone, let us. So whomsoever which are uh, uh, inside the Mac cone will be able to feel the disturbance, but all the fluid elements which are ahead of this Mac, Mac cone will remain in the silent zone. So due to the lack of this propagation of this disturbance, the fluid elements which are just ahead of the aircraft will hit the aircraft instead of flowing smoothly over the aircraft, right? which was the case for subsonic flow. So it, uh, the same will not happen here anymore. The fluid element ha doesn't have any information about the presence of the object in the fluid or the disturbance that is created by the object in the fluid. Right? So instead of passing slowly, uh, slowly across the body, right, it will try to hit the body abruptly. So the molecules there will feel a shock, you know, across that part, like as soon as it encounters this aircraft. So, so those molecules will encounter this aircraft by means of a shock. So in a lower subsonic speeds, what happens is the flow will smoothly flow over this object. The fluid elements will smoothly flow over the airfoil at subsonic speeds. At supersonic speeds, what happens is if the leading edge of the airfoil is sharp enough, then you will have an attached shock to it, right? So if the leading edge is sharp enough, you have attached shock. So if the leading edge is blunt, you will end up seeing a detached shock for, for sharp bodies, for sharp leading edge, for blunt bodies this one. So, so as soon as the fluid particles crosses the shock, you know, so there will be huge variation in pressure, increase in pressure, temperature, as well as density. Okay, and the velocity downstream the shock, as I told you, is always less than the velocity upstream the shock. Okay. So this pressure is nothing but like the compression of those mass of the fluid particles which are ahead of the, no, ahead of this uh, flying object, right? 
So, this compressed fluid particles will offer additional resistance to its motion. Right. So, that additional resistance to the motion apart from the skin friction as well as pressure drag is the wave drag. Okay. So, the wave drag is due to that skin friction, oh, sorry, that additional resistance by the fluid particles across the shock no, for the uh, aircraft to move, move in that particular fluid. Okay, so that's a that's a story about this uh, wave drag. Yeah. So this profile drag coefficient, if you look at the profile drag coefficient. So I'm talking about profile drag coefficient here. So if you look at profile drag coefficient, it will almost remain constant with Mach number, right? So until certain uh, yeah until certain Mach number called drag divergence Mach number. So, beyond which there is an abrupt increase in the drag. Okay. Increasing Mach number. So, this. So, until certain regime there the change in the, the variation in CD, CD naught or profile drag, uh, what you can say is profile, CD profile. So, the profile drag coefficient will remain constant or can, can be considered the variation is very, very insignificant in this till certain Mach number called drag divergence Mach number beyond which there is an abrupt increase in the drag, drag coefficient, profile drag coefficient, right. So, so that is the drag, the Mach number at which the change or there is an abrupt increase in this drag co profile drag coefficient is called drag divergence Mach number. So, when you look at subsonic speeds, what happens, consider a point P here, right, a local, uh, a local point or say the minimum pressure point on the, on the airfoil, let us say that. So, if this velocity which is less than 1, so on the surface it will increase definitely compared to that of free stream velocity here, isn't it? That is what we studied till now. And then if the velocity is let us say is close to is close to a higher subsonic speeds or close to sonic speeds right let us say though it is not close to the sonic speed the speed stream velocity is not close to the sonic speed but still if it uh, if it is higher or close enough to the sonic speed what happens the velo even when you are flying at a subsonic speed close to sonic right m is equals to 1 okay close to so, what happens is the local flow accelerates and you will see a shock wave on the surface of this wing, right. So, the local subsonic speeds at which the airfoil or the aircraft first encounters a Mach wave or, or a sonic speed is known as critical Mach number. So, you are still at a local uh, or subsonic speed, but your wings see a sonic boom on it or sonic so, or a shock wave on it or, or you, you can say you, you see the flow local velocity will reach as Mach number 1. Right. So, that particular uh, Mach number at which the uh, you are flying or the flight uh, Mach number of that flight is considered as critical Mach number. Right. So, critical Mach number and drag divergence Mach number are two important parameters that we need to talk about. So, critical Mach number is in general less than drag divergence Mach number. So, though you are flying it, so again you have to delay this critical Mach number as much as possible. Why? Because as soon as you see the critical Mach number on the surface, you have you see on the surface of the wing, you see a higher speeds, right. So, maybe uh, uh, yeah of course, critical Mach number corresponds to sonic speed on the on the surface of the wing. So, that will create a shock wave which will increase the drag, right. So, aim is to reduce that drag. In the previous problem, we saw that when we want to fly at higher velocities, once you solve it for different velocities, you get to know that you need more drag to overcome. You have to, mo you need more force to overcome the drag. Because the drag, drag increases and the requirement or the input to the system has to increase accordingly. So, if you have, so the main aim is to decrease this drag. So, there are various ways to decrease this drag again, right. So, we are not going to discuss about that in the here, but uh, the 
I, I want you to understand what is critical Mach number and what is drag divergence Mach number. So critical Mach number is the local subsonic Mach number at which the aircraft first encounters sonic speed on the wing, right, on the wings. And drag divergence Mach number is the Mach number at which the profile drag coefficient start a rapid increase. In. See, sir, uh, profile drag coefficient will see a rapid increase. In. Rapid increase, right? So that is a drag divergence Mach number. Okay, see you. Thank you.